Video games can be beautiful, exciting, and mind-expanding at the best of times. They can also be so hard, so infuriating, and so broken that they make us want to cry. As you probably gathered, this is not a list about the awe-inspiring moments that made us glad to be gamers, it's about those other times. Specifically, the levels in video games both great and not so great that made us want to tear our hair out for being either mechanically confounding, unreasonably difficult, or a combination of the two. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 confusing video game levels we never want to play again. Number 10. Nightmare Blood Trail – Max Payne while checking out a gameplay video of this one on YouTube, I found this top comment which read, and let me check, easily the worst part of any game I've ever had the displeasure of having to complete. And that's just too good of a sentence not to share with you or to include on this list. Quite apart from being difficult to complete, these levels are horribly unsettling. If we're talking confusing levels, then the maze of long dark corridors and painful blood tightrope that you'll need to navigate in Max's nightmare certainly qualifies. If you haven't played this one, basically Max has a nightmare about the night his wife and daughter died, and you get to play it! Yay! <laughs> to get through the trickiest part of the level, you'll need to explore a pitch black room, attempting to firstly not fall off, and subsequently jump between blood trails on the floor while listening to thumping music and a baby crying the entire time. It doesn't help that this isn't a precision platformer, and Max isn't exactly a gymnast. Fall off the blood trail and you're booted back to the beginning. What's more, this is actually an excellent game, it's just a purely horrible level. Whether it was the controls that broke your brain on this one, the terror, or your complete inability to figure out where you were supposed to be going, I think it's safe to say the vast majority of us never want to play this one again. Number 9. The Water Temple – The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time I know, we had to do it. I'd argue this is the perfect list for the Water Temple to live on because, on reflection, it wasn't that hard. It was just that most of us played it as kids and probably sucked at games a lot more than we do now. What it was, however, is extraordinarily confusing. A labyrinth of corridors, hidden channels, rooms, numerous puzzles, and hidden switches. This was just too much for a lot of kids to figure out, and remains an exercise in frustration for most adults. Of course, it doesn't help that I can count on one hand the number of games where traveling through water doesn't suck and Ocarina of Time does not make the cut. If the navigation wasn't complicated enough, there's also threatening spiky enemies to contend with, things that want to kill you in the water where you can only attack with your hookshot, and specific locations to find so you can change the water level to achieve your goal, which requires an incredible level of outside-the-box thinking. I guess we're ultimately better gamers after having gotten through this one, but boy does it make me hesitant to start another playthrough. Number 8. Rug Ride – Disney's Aladdin since we've covered painful water levels, we may as well give fire a look in too. And if your childhood wasn't marred by the pain of experiencing the water temple, I bet this one's gonna ring a bell. Disney's Aladdin was released in 1993 on the Sega Genesis and SNES, to the collective joy of Aladdin and video game fans everywhere. Interestingly though, we're only talking about the Genesis version here because the SNES version was a lot easier. This one must have seemed like an obvious buy for parents around Christmas time since it came out in November, and it's just the collision of a video game and one of Disney's best films. Makes sense, right? Except for the fact that they decided to make the game really freaking hard. One particular level, Rug Ride, had plenty of young players in tears as Aladdin on the magic carpet trying to fly away from a very fast, very threatening lava surge in an inhumanely fast auto-scrolling level. This one hurt largely because the game is programmed with such a small window of success that you had to pull everything off pretty much perfectly lest Aladdin be toasted to a crisp. Genie would give you blink and you'll miss it instructions of where to go next to avoid bumping into platforms as you go, and if you think you've made it, the jerk throws you a question mark at the end, so it's just luck as to whether you'll stumble at the last hurdle. As a result, a lot of players learned about cheat codes because of this game. Given anybody who played this one has probably already poured hours and hours of their life into trying to get through this level, I think it's safe to say we don't want to play it again. Number 7. The Library – Halo Combat Evolved If there's one thing we can say in favor of the side-scrolling hellscape that is Aladdin's rug ride level, at least it's straightforward. Literally, you're just going straight, sometimes up and down, usually into a rock to your death. Not so of Halo's The Library level, where the fan-favorite FPS apparently decided to lose a few fans by featuring what is pretty universally acknowledged to be the worst level in the entire franchise. 
The library is a seventh campaign level in Halo Combat Evolved. It requires you to fight your way through four gruelingly long and repetitive flood riddled levels to ultimately reach the index chamber. Essentially, between how much you'll be getting lost and inevitably dying to the many waves of enemies, this is the part of Halo where a lot of players straight up stopped having fun. The environments are boring, convoluted, and way too big, the enemies you're pointing your gun at are uninteresting, and if you try to run through it, you'll probably die and the whole thing will take you even longer. I really hope you like walking down hallways and riding elevators because that's your life now. Even the developers themselves admitted that this level runs about half an hour longer than it should. Number 6. The Path of Hades, God of War It's been said this particular level requires patience and skill. If you don't have the latter, I hope you have the former in spades, because otherwise this is gonna get ugly. Perhaps the most hated level in the whole God of War series is the Path of Hades. If I just unlocked a painful memory here, hit me up in the comments, we'll have some group therapy. Pun fully intended, this level can go to hell. Kratos is a tough dude, but even he has a real tough time climbing back out of Hades, as the path is riddled with infuriating platforming sections that you have to pull off with a fixed camera, loads of enemies to defeat, traps to evade, and a rotating wheel wall which has claimed many a gamer many a time. If the spinning cylindrical walkways don't get you, the blade sticking out of them will, and if you're able to get past that, you might get knocked off a floating platform by an enemy anyway. Just watching this level play out is anxiety inducing. The level actually starts out chaotic and tricky and then just keeps upping the ante until it's over. The difficulty of the puzzles and the foes you have to contend with on narrow platforms is so unbalanced it deters fans from wanting to replay the full game itself, let alone how much they don't want to touch this one infuriating level. Number 5. The Black Pits Battle – Divinity Original Sin 2 Divinity Original Sin 2 may be the best RPG of this century, at least in this humble host's opinion, but it is a turn-based combat game, meaning that if you screw up in combat, you might not realize until you're 40 minutes in, and that's a lot of backtracking. To be fair, I think you'll have a worse time here if you're playing with unreliable co-op companions instead of controlling the action yourself, but no matter what, the Black Pits encounter is going to give you a hard time. It might not be a level in the traditional sense, but it's certainly a section we can firmly identify in the game, and then preferably cast out into the fires of hell, so I'm gonna allow it. Divinity Original Sin 2 is a classic old-school party-based RPG that requires careful tuning of your party makeup, equipment, abilities, and tactics. Every move needs to be executed to perfection unless you're playing on a low difficulty, especially in this particular level, which will almost definitely result in everything being on fire. If you didn't spec into Hydrosophist with Losa, you're about to regret that very quickly because there's not much you can do about all the propagating flames. To make things even more difficult, you need to keep an NPC alive and defeat a swarm of oil voidlings, which spawn out of the pits, and fire voidlings which heal as they move through the fire, which, as we discussed, is almost definitely covering the oil-laden battlefield. Also, the NPC does that painful NPC thing where he tries to help out, but his attacks are lightning-based, so you guessed it, everything ends up on fire. Number 4. Dreadnought's Garbage Dump – Super Mario Galaxy Super Mario Galaxy is yet another fantastic game, but this particular level will have you putting it down longing to never return. Basically, everybody's favorite plumber is asked to distribute bombs around an area to take out a couple of dozen piles of garbage, which would definitely be doable if you weren't given 30 seconds to do it. On top of which, the bombs take about 10 full seconds to explode. Yeah, a third of the time you have to complete the entire challenge. So if you don't place them perfectly the first time, then you'll have to try again. And if you place them perfectly, but not within the last 10 seconds before the timer is up, they won't blow up in time for the cranky robot to tell you you're good to go. Even though he could just wait a couple more seconds, then the bombs would explode, then everything would be clean, we could take our style, go on our merry way. Stupid robot. If you do manage to get through this one and think you handled it okay, you'll have to do it again later as Luigi, and it's even harder. So that's fun. Number 3. The Prison Level – Amnesia The Dark Descent A little unconventional here, but I think enough people stop playing Amnesia at the prison level that it deserves a spot on this list. The entire game you've been terrorized by horrible looking creatures, gradually losing and recovering sanity, and managing to make a little progress along the way. Comparatively, the prison is so dark, so complicated, and so unsettling that it's become one of the great I do not want to be playing this level now nor do I ever want to play it again areas in gaming. 
This isn't because the game is bad, mind you. It's just this particular section is relentlessly terrifying while still calling on you to solve its environmental puzzles and navigate your way through. Sure, you could pull out your lantern or light up a torch, but at that point, you may as well don a sign saying, what's up gatherers, lunch is served. A part of you will certainly feel like you've come this far and better keep going, but the combo of your own fear, monsters roaming around, and the difficulty in figuring out where to go next is easily too much for a lot of players. I'm confused, I'm scared, and I don't want to play anymore. Number 2. Pulling down a Star Destroyer – The Force Unleashed Pulling a Star Destroyer out of the sky with your Force powers doesn't seem like something you'd be able to do, and given the finicky controls of the Force Unleashed, it almost is something a ton of players weren't able to do. For those who pulled it off, I'm sure there's very few who are keen to dive back in for another go of balancing their attempt to drag the enormous ship closer while attempting to not be blown up by the most TIE fighters you've ever seen. Being told repeatedly to pull it out of the sky when you are indeed already trying to pull it out of the sky but also not die in the process is even more of a pain. Lay on top of that confusing UI instructions that seem to suggest you move the thumbsticks in a direction that won't actually achieve a force pull, and you've got an A-plus recipe for a level we never, ever want to play again. Number 1. The Dam – Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles This one's an oldie but a goodie, and by goodie I mean baddie, as in this is one of the universally accepted toughest levels ever made for a video game. You've probably heard this one from us before, but there's a good reason as to why. Because TMNT is a cut above when it comes to creating levels that are brutally painful disasters which somehow made it through the QA process. Particularly awful is the level The Dam, where players are forced to contend with an underwater maze complete with fast diminishing air supply, swarms of electric seaweed, and confounding level design. Add to that the fact that you're tasked with defusing 8 bombs in just 2 minutes and 20 seconds, plus there's next to no room for error, and this level has no redeeming qualities. After managing the brutal difficulty and maddening mechanics, if you did get to the end of this one and managed to see that OK pop-up saying that you won it, there's no way you're looking back. That's it for our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other confusing video game levels that you never, ever want to play again. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.